data preparation is time consuming and tedious. Be ready. Today, you are going to learn how to perform a professional geostatistical study based on universal Kriegin. We are going to do a full geostatistical study, as we did for the lesson one about ordinary Kriegin. It means that we are going to cover all the steps from the beginning to the end, from the exploratory data analysis to the map creation and edition. And to do that one, we are going to use the WorldCamp Aquifer dataset. This dataset is using the groundwater elevation in a couple of states in United States. As you can see, this dataset is covering part of New Mexico and also part of Texas. And it is these yellow dots on the map. The main goal is to create the groundwater flow map direction using geostatistic techniques. But before to start, let's go to talk a little bit about this data set. I created a test document where I brought all the links that we are going to visit today. And these links are related with the WorldCamp Aquifer dataset. Then I'm going to load this uh, text file at the GeoRGB community website. Then if you want to download that uh, text file, just go to courses, go to the fourth geostatistic course, interpolation and mapping of Kriegen co-Kriegen. Then start learning. Select the lesson. In this case, it's going to be the lesson two, but I'm going to use the lesson one as an example. Then when you are in lesson one, you can go here to the bottom of the page. And here there is an option. It says exercise files. Then you can click here. And as you can see here, we have the links that we was using at the lesson one and also the scripts. Then you can press this option over here to download the documents. And it's going to be the same for the lesson two. You know, you are going to have a section in the lesson two where you can download the scripts, the links, the data set is going to be the same. Then the first link we are going to see is this one. And I loaded already the page and it's about the wiki stats. This uh, website called my attention because has a general view of the WorldCamp Aquifer data. Let's see what we have here. Data overview, the WorldCamp Aquifer data, and here we have the main reference, that's crisis 1993, was acquired by the US Department of Energy in the 1980s to study a nuclear west site, Death Smith County in Texas, bordering New Mexico. The contamination of the aquifer was a concern and therefore the piezometric head data were obtained at 85 locations by drilling a narrow pipe through the aquifer. And here we have a map of United States showing the location of the World Camp Aquifer data set. Data description. Piezometric head measurements taken at the World Camp Aquifer, Texas, USA, Sea Crisis, 1993 for the description of the scientific problem and data. Original data were converted to SI units. Coordinates are given in kilometers and pressure heads measures are in kilometers above the sea level. Then here we have X for the X coordinate, Y for the Y coordinate, and data for the groundwater elevation. The interesting thing is that the coordinates are using an arbitrary point as origin. As we are going to see later, that one is going to be a problem because we don't know exactly what is the location of the piezometers. As we don't have a standard uh, reference coordinate system, that could be an issue. But I'm going to show you how we fix that problem. And here we have the, the data table where we have the X and Y coordinates and also the data that is related with the groundwater elevation. The next link is this one. And this one, it's pretty interesting because it's indicating that we can get the World Camp Aquifer data using the package GeoR in the software R. Unfortunately, I tried to load this package on my R Studio, but I couldn't because it's no longer available in CRAN. Then you have to look for different sources where you can get this package. 
Then here again, we have a description. It's the same description as we saw in the other link. And here there are some scripts that you can use to load uh, the package on R. Also, you have some reference. And here you have some uh, univariate and bivariate analysis. And that's it. I thought that this link could be interesting if you want to load or if you want to try to load uh, this uh, package on, on R. Even you can run uh, this script from here if you press this option. And here you have the statistics, right? Also, if you want to know a little bit more about this data set, I recommend to read the references, this one. I have the book. As you can see over here is this book, Statistics for Spatial Data. And here is the book. But unfortunately, this book has copyright and I cannot show you. But I make a summary and I'm going to read that summary. OK, that summary, it comes from the pages, as you can see here at the reference in this one from the pages from 212 to 214, okay? And is this summary. I'm going to read for you. In 1987, the United States were looking for a site to become a nuclear waste repository. The proposed sites were Salt Bat in Texas, Basalt Formations in Washington State, and Taft Formation near Las Vegas in Nevada. The selected candidate will contain more than 68,000 high-level west canisters placed underground, leaving about 30 feet between each of them in hole or trenches surrounded by salt. The extension of the repository site will cover approximately two square miles. The U.S. Department of Energy indicated that the repository must insulate the nuclear waste for at least 10,000 years. However, there was a potential risk of nuclear contamination due to the leaks. The Death Smith County was the candidate site located in Texas. Here, there is a deep brine aquifer known as a Wald Kampf Aquifer. The groundwater flow direction was considered a pathway for the migration of a potential nuclear leak. Using the geostatistics, it is possible to determine what is the groundwater flow direction and consequently the movement of a potential nuclear contaminant. During the field campaign, the piezometric head data was collected as well as their location. This piezometric data was obtained by drilling a narrow pipe into the ground and letting the water stabilize its own level in the pipe. At the end, a rigorous screen was conducted and a total of 85 piezometers were considered to be suitable for the geostatistical study. As a matter of interest, in 1987, the U.S. Congress decided to locate the repository site in Nevada. This is, is just a summary from the book, but if you make your own search on Google, you are going to find a lot of information related with this event. Even I added some links here. It's going to be these three links that is related with uh, geostatistic studies related with uh, the Wolfgang Aquifer data set. As you can see, this one is the first one, geostatistical analysis of potentiometric data in Wolfgang Aquifer of the Palo Duro Basin in Texas. And here you have the full geostatistic study, right? And also this one, Amarillo by Mo Morning, Data Visualization in Geostatistics. More or less all the time is, is the same information, you know, but from different websites. Also this one, there are a lot. You can see a lot of information related with uh, this uh, investigation. Now, let me tell you how I get uh, the data set to be low added in, in QGIS, OK? Because it was not easy. As this project, it's uh, very old. You know, they started the investigation in 1986 or 87, you know. The, the coordinates of the wells 
it was uh, from an arbitrary point, as we saw over here, right? Arbitrary point. And it is not clear how, how to how to use these, these coordinates to locate the walls. Then I found this website where someone was asking for how to get the locations. And there was no uh, something that you can use directly, right? And there was someone that was saying that he used this map, this one over here. He georeferenced this map. And through the georeference, he made the location of the walls in a different map. And it was this map over here. And I used this map to, to create my data set. As here, we have a lot of reference, you know, because we have river, we have the main roads, uh, we have uh, big cities. We have a lot of reference here in this map. It, it is pretty easy to georeference this map on QGIS, and that's what I did. I georeference this map. If you don't know how to do that one, I have a video tutorial here in my YouTube uh, channel in this one. In this one, I show you how you can uh, georeference an old image. And you can use this tutorial to georeference also this map. And then when I have this map in georeference, what I did is digitalize all the walls, you know, on QGIS. And then I assign the groundwater elevation for each of these docks. It was a... Uh, it was, I'm not going to say it is pretty hard to do this job, but it takes time, okay? And the location of the walls is not going to be exactly, right? Because there are a lot of things here involved, right? First, the person who creates this map, he georeferenced this one, right? Then he created this one, and I did my uh, database using this map okay but the important thing is not the location of the walls is the geostatistic study right and in this case if the walls are not really well located it's not going to be very important for for our purpose in this lesson also another important thing that we have to consider for this project is that the area of investigation that is all this area is located between two different uh, UTM zones. Let me show you with the Google Earth. As you can see, this one is our area of investigation. And if you see here at the bottom for the zones, we pass from the 13 zone to the 14. Okay, we have two different UTM zones. Then I decided to project all the information at the zone 13 because in that way our coordinates are going to be always positive. Remember that we have a similar case when we was working at the first lesson with the ordinary Kriegen at the state of California. Now I would like to show you how you can load the data on QGIS. Then let's go to suppose that we started with this data. This data, it's uh, a file, you know, an spreadsheet. Then first we want to make sure that we save this spreadsheet in this format. That is uh, CSV. We need this format because this format is the one works with the uh, QGIS, right? And then we are going to save in this folder with this name, okay? Because the reference coordinate systems, the UTM is going to be the WES 84 son 13, okay? Then save. And we want to keep this format. And what we have in this data set is an ID. That ID is different for each wall. Then we have the coordinates X and Y. These coordinates are in meters. And also we have the groundwater elevation that is in meters, okay? Then we can close this one. And now we have this format, okay? This format is the one you can open with the Office, you know, with Excel. And this one is the one we can open with uh, QGIS. 
Then I have one new project here. Then click this option to add a new layer. Select this option, delimited text. Then select the file we created is this one, this format. Open. Make sure you have this option selected. Also make sure for the X field you have the X coordinate and for the Y field you have the Y coordinate. And make sure here you have the reference coordinate systems that is this one, WGS 84 zone 13. Then we have to change here the reference. Is going to be 13 north, this one. Okay. And add and close. Then make sure here you have the coordinates. Uh, WGS 84 UTM 13 that's good okay and now what we are going to do as we have this file in this format let me show you information we have this format we want the information to be in a shape file in that way we can work with um, R integrated in QGIS then what we are going to do first is create new folder here new folder that is going to be shape file shape file project then we are going to export to that folder then click right on your mouse and then select uh, export say save feature as here select the shape file then for the name is going to be, we are going to save here in this folder and it's going to be data set. Data set like that, save. Make sure you have the proper coordinate reference systems. And that's it, okay. And now we can remove this one remove and yes and now we are going to keep this one that is in shape file if we go to properties information you are going to see that now the format is a shape file and then also we can load the satellite image to see if the walls are well located then satellite image we can change the color properties symbology in we can put a yellow to see better apply and okay and we can use the hybrid map it's going to be better in this case uh, this one and i'm going to take this one out and as you can see now the data it's perfectly located right we have here the state of new mexico and here we have the state of texas then the file i'm going to load on the second lesson is going to be this file okay i'm not going to add the shape file i'm going to add the this uh, spreadsheet on the website that you can download if you want to reproduce the same results okay now the next step is to start with the exploratory data analysis and the first step is going to be the univariate analysis